But why is this word church so important? Whose church is it? Why does it matter? What's this all about, right? What's this all about? According to Colossians 1.18, he, again, we're dropping into English class, it's a pronoun, and who is he representing? Christ, all right? He, Jesus Christ, is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Can I just say this? At Thrive Church, we believe this church belongs to Jesus Christ. This church belongs to Jesus Christ. This church, biblically speaking, is a bride. It's weird. I'm a guy. I'm thinking I'm a bride. Like maybe ladies, you're like, oh, wonderful, new dress. Let's do this again, right? You're like, but, but we're a bride of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. This church belongs. It is the body of Christ. It is his. The church, all churches, biblically, do not belong to the pastor, do not belong to the board, do not belong to the elders. The, the church, biblically, belongs to Jesus, and in turn, we sit up here leading from a position of being a steward. We sit up here leading from a position saying, you know what, I am accountable to Jesus because this is his church, this is his bride, the people, the believers that call this church their home, the collection of Thrive Church. Listen, Christ is the head, period. It is not mine. It is not the, the elders. It is not the deacons. It is not the ministry team leaders. It is, not, it is Christ. Christ is the head. He is the be all, end all. This is his, and we live for him. So at our church, we say we have one head. We have one head, and that's Jesus. And the more we get to know Jesus and who Jesus is and what he calls us to do, our church should have one heart. Our church should have one heart. Some lawyers ask Jesus a question, trying to trip him up. This is found in Matthew 22, 36 to 40. And they said, hey, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment in the Old Testament? Well, the Old Testament had over 300 commands and over 600 don't do's and all these laws. And it was just rule after rule after rule after rule. And they're trying to trick Jesus because it's like asking you to pick which child do you love more. Maybe you have one child. It's an easy answer. What if you have two? Three, four, five, six, right? Now it's like, which child do you love more? Jesus, which, which rule is your favorite? And he answers it and he summarizes all the rules in these two commandments. You're called to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And likewise is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So our one heart, if Christ is the head of our church, our church should have the heartbeat of loving God. That's you and your heart, loving God, your spiritual heart, the place that your life flows from, the thing that you're supposed to be guarding. That's your heart. You're supposed to be loving God with all of your heart, all your soul, all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. That was repeated again in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. It says, man, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and teach your kids to do the same and model it for your kids. And then it goes into Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 4. It's a great section of verses, and it talks about, listen, in the church, you shouldn't be looking out for your own interests, but the interests of others. And there should be this unity and this oneness and this connectiveness that comes together because Christ is the head. We have the one heart that Christ wants us to have. Therefore, we as the church follow through with unity, with direction, with purpose, with understanding. We're to be growing disciples, not growing the church, because when you grow disciples, you always grow the church. So let's get our heads on straight. Let's know what matters. Let's know who we're listening to. Finally, one head, one heart. The next slide says many hands. Many hands, right? Take a look at those hands you got. Take a look at them, right? Who's got a manicure lately, right? Who needs to clip their nails, who, who, right? You look at your hands, God's giving you hands. God's given our church people. Those people have hands, and those hands, the many hands at Thrive Church are to be called to be doing the work that Jesus says a church should do. Ephesians 4, again, this is a mini sermon. I could preach on each one of these, right, for a long time, but we're not doing that. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let's go, can I ask you a question? Has the Bible been clear this morning? Have, have you been seeing how the verses fit together and what we're called to do and, and understanding that you are the subject? You are the person being called to do these things, and we want to live it out, and we want to see it happen, and we want to see it move forward. Listen, we're called with one head, one heart, many hands to accomplish the work that God has put in front of us. We're called with one head, with one heart, with many hands to accomplish the work. 
Pastor BJ has this saying, I loved it, so I stole it from him, but I told him I stole it from him, so he gets the credit for it. But he has a saying, hands on. What does that mean? That's right. And then they're saying, hands together, hands open. So God's given us many hands at our church, and with those many hands, we're called to be hands on ministry. If you're in a ministry team, if you're serving in a capacity and using the gifts that God's given you in a capacity, you have hands on. You have hands on at our church, helping us move forward as a church. That's not to say there's people here that are serving in different outlets, but maybe it's just not as directly connected to our church. But we want to see our hands on in ministry. We want you to be able to say, this is what my hands are on at Thrive Church. This is what I'm a part of. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm serving. We want to see people saying they have their hands together. Hands together mean what? Praying. Praying for what? Praying for Thrive Church. Praying for opportunities. Praying for obedience. Praying for the condition of my heart. Praying for a oneness of unity. Praying for the direction we're going in. Praying for our overall goals. And finally, we should have our hands open in giving. In giving, God calls generosity a thing that the church should celebrate because God's blessed us. In turn, we give back to bless him. And it's a thing of generosity. It's a thing of beauty that comes out of that as we give back to God as an act of worship.